animals evolved long when we began to colonize land. It had become an important trait for land vertebrates. Even so, some of them lost their lung, including one of the rarest amphibians in the world, the lungless frog. But why though? How could they live without lung? And do they actually don't have lung? So, let me brought up the question. What exactly is the lungless frog? The lungless frog's name is actually Barborula kalimantanensis, or more commonly known as the Bornean flat-headed frog. There are only two species in this genus. The other one is Barborula busuangensis, which is endemic to the Philippines. They are members of the Bombinatoridae family, which is more commonly known as the fire belly toads, represented by the Bombina genus. Now, let's pause for a moment. Let me just point it out. Isn't it kind of funny that the family itself is called toad? Meanwhile, the two species of Barborula are called frogs? I think Barborula are technically also toads, but it's fine, not really a big deal. I'm just gonna call them Barborula anyway. So, Barborula kalimantanensis is only found around the Kapuas River basins, Indonesia. And if you look at this distribution map, you might think, is it really that rare? And the answer is basically, yes, it's really that rare. In 1976, a male specimen was collected in the riverbed under a large rock in Nangasayan, West Kalimantan, Indonesia. They found out that this rock has webbed toes and fingers flat body, and eyes situated dorsally. Also some specific characters such as conspicuous nasolacrimal papillae and pterygoid with a large ventrolateral flange. These characters are similar to Barborula busuangensis, which was discovered in the Philippines back in 1923. And so, this creature was then published in 1978 as the Barborula kalimantanensis. By the way, this frog is even flatter than Barborula busuangensis, so that's quite something. At that time, this was just a frog. I mean, it's still an important discovery, of course. It's a new species. But we don't really know anything about it. Let me remind you that this was only a singular specimen. And it continues like this for years, establishing the fact that this is at least a rare frog. 17 years later, in 1995, or perhaps few years before that, another specimen had been found, this time a female. And so, with these two specimens, we finally got a better description. Their body are relatively stocky, but not that big. The male specimen was 68 mm, while the female was 78 mm. They have fully webbed feet. They also have skin folds at the side of their body. These two characters, combined with their flat body and upward pointing eyes, are evidence that they are clearly highly adapted for aquatic life, just like the pipa and senapus. They also have peculiar fingers and toes. Their second, third, and fourth digits are almost equal in length and size. Combined with full webbings, this makes them have a paddle-like limb, very efficient for swimming. Sexual dimorphism was observed in the species. Male is smaller than female. But of course, it's not really conclusive since this was based on only two specimens, one for each gender. Nevertheless, females clearly show anal clasper, which is a triangular muscle projection in each side of the cloaca. I didn't find any clear image of this, so just imagine it being similar to the shark claspers, but smaller of course. Male also seem to have proportionally wider head than female. Oh, by the way, the female specimen was also found in relatively shallow river with swift stream under a boulder near where the male specimen was found. And so, we basically pinpointed their habitat, right? Well, technically yes. Unfortunately, we didn't find any more specimens for years. So now it's not just a rare frog, but a super rare one. Years later, early 2000s, zoologists keep searching for this frog in the wild. Unfortunately, the original habitat had been ruined by illegal gold mining. Nothing was found in the original habitat. But, during a 2005 biodiversity survey in an orangutan habitat, scientists accidentally found one individual. They took measurements and photographs, 
and this was the first time a photograph of a living individual was available to public. Another group of scientists then searched quite a distance from the original habitat. And fortunately, in 2007, they found not just one specimen, but an entire population of this frog. Most of the photos available were from here. And so, they start collecting specimens. Back in the lab, it's time for some dissection, since they finally got more specimens. And then, a gasping revelation was found. Or should I say, was not found. It should be obvious by now, but yes, they found out that Barbodula kalimantanensis don't have lung. They first notice something's weird when they look at the oral cavity. Usually, when you open up frog's mouth, you'll see this hole. This is the glottis. In amphibians, this is where air will enter and exit their body. They don't have a secondary palatum, which means the air that passes through their nostrils will enter their mouth cavity which is why the entry of the airway is in their mouth. Anyway, when they open up the oral cavity of Barbodula kalimantanensis, they didn't find the glottis. It's weird that they don't have a glottis, right? I mean, then where will the air enter their body from? And apparently, after doing more dissections, they found out that these frogs have no lung. So, by that logic, air don't need to enter from anywhere. So glottis is not needed. Quite simple, really. But why, though? How do they breathe? Well, as some of you might have known, amphibians can breathe through their skin, and that's absolutely correct. But still, most adult amphibians still breathe with lungs. So, what's special about Barbarula kalimantanensis? It's their habitat. They live in a clean river with a relatively low temperature and swift stream. That condition enables the water to hold more oxygen. And so, to put it simply, the oxygen from water is enough for them to survive. No need to breathe in air. But then, the question is, why do they need to lose lung? The possible answer is, because lung is an air sac. That means it will float in the water. Having lungs makes it harder for them to stay underwater. Remember that they live in fast-moving water, so if they float, they would be carried away a lot of the time. And so, because it's a nuisance, and because they don't really need it, it's better for them to lose it. Oh, by the way, if you didn't know, them having no lung is actually a big deal. Not for them, but for us. It's not that they affect us in any way. It's just because we discover something unique. They are the only frogs without lung. And so, they aren't just a super rare frog. They are an SSR frog, one of a kind. And if you thought, oh, we finally found a new habitat, surely now they are not that rare, right? Yeah, kinda. We did find several spots for them since then. Even so, we don't really know much about them. We don't even know how their tadpole looks like. We don't know how they breed, etc. And for years, they hold the title of being a one-of-a-kind frog. That is, until years later, published in May 2024, zoologists ran a high-resolution micro-CD scan on the 2007 specimens. And then, they found another gasping revelation that Barbodula kalimantanensis actually have glottis and lung. But still, it's really really small, so it might not even be functional. And by the way, after all these years, we still don't know about their tadpole and lifestyle. So what do you think? Are them having lungs make them less special? In any case, it's good to know that with how much science and technology had advanced, we could find new informations from old specimens. Now, imagine what else are hidden in specimens somewhere in the world waiting to be discovered at the right time. In science, when you think you know everything about something, you already fail. We could never know everything about this world, but that's the fun of it. Even after all these years, we could still find new discoveries, new things to surprise us. But for now, let's just learn what is known. 
And that's all for now.